Just tell us a little bit about yourself and you know your journey so far with Edge Network. So um, we started in 2012, and we started as an as an application that could read resumes and read job descriptions. And essentially, you know, our journey was to look at unstructured data and mimic the human brain. And it was solving a simple problem because everyone gets resumes for a job, right? And um, they don't have time to read all of them in an unbiased, consistent form. And we figured if we could build artificial intelligence uh, to do just that, uh, it would solve a global problem. So global problem, simple solution, complex at the back end. So the complexity, I think, was driven across the fact that we had to build data science around mimicking the neural network of the human brain, not just for the IT industry. We had to figure out you know, how we could do it for the oil industry, how we could do it for... Uh, the construction industry, how we could do it for a myriad of job functions, right? Because you have uh, different titles, different skill bases, different competencies, uh, different disciplines, processes, and there on, therefore. Yeah. So once we started off uh, building this application, we uh, sort of went to Wipro. Wipro is our first uh, flagship customer because they have 150, 160,000 people. It was a people supply chain problem that we were solving. And uh, we started becoming a company. The reason being, and why I say this uh, uh, in a real sense, is we started developing into a platform because we found that the problem of acquiring talent was something that we see on the outside. We all want a job. We go to a portal. We go to a career page. We have somebody tell us, hey, you know what? Have you heard about this job? But that's on the outside. What about the 160,000 people sitting on the inside? They all are there for a job and they all have to get allocated to specific job descriptions for projects. And that's really a huge load of work that happens internally. And we figured out this data sort of mining effort that has to happen on an unstructured parallel on the inside was something that we could do effectively. So we started becoming an internal workforce optimization solution and a talent acquisition solution. So we acquired customers like Wipro, and then it was HCL, uh, Teamly's, Dell is our latest acquisition, our first US customer. And incidentally, Dell services got acquired by NTT Data, uh, one of the largest services businesses globally. They're a $17 billion company, and we're gonna start working with NTT now. So as the journey goes, we look at IT-enabled services as our sweet spot because these are people supply chain businesses that allocate people to jobs. And the whole talent transformation journey that is occurring when you're talking about their customers changing their needs and they are becoming more automation heavy where the tasks that they would have normally given a Wipro, an HCL, a Cognizant, a TCS has now changed dramatically, which means that the talent internally has to change dramatically. Our ability to understand all of this on the fly using data science, data models, using statistics as a core has made us very valuable to these customers. Uh, so is it something that only large organizations which want to manage their uh, workforces would, would see value in? Uh, how if, if I'm a small and medium enterprise, 500,000 people, uh, how, how would you uh, talk to me about this? So when you say small and medium enterprise and you talk about 500,000 people, the most important thing that you're, you're sort of uh, looking at is to a 500 member company, to a 1000 member company, they're not small, right? They have the same problems. Microland is my customer, Microland is 2800 people. It took me as long to close Microland as it took to close HCL as a business value proposition, as a contract. And the reason is that they have the same problems. Is the HCL contract more valuable from a monetary perspective? Of course, right? Uh, is it um, um, more valuable from a learning perspective? The problems with larger companies are pretty much the same but addressed very differently. And if you're able to address for the larger population, then your solutions for the smaller population start becoming a lot more fine, right? And uh, you're able to very quickly sort of, uh, it's like a, a person who can play at the international cricket level. If you ask him to pay, you know, 
at the league level in a district, it becomes so easy for him because he's faced fast bowling. He's faced Brett Lee. He's faced Shane Warne. And now you ask him to play for, you know, Hubli district. He will play fantastically well, right? So that's exactly how we look at it. So, uh, in terms of your solution, while it solves the problem of workforce management uh, with respect to the internal talent that I have, uh, what are some of the other applications of the data then hence I collect that you've seen your customers uh, have naturally taken the product to? So I'd say the other applications is more, there are, there's a dual core. One is search and match. One is to fulfill people very fast, the right person for the right job, right? That's a fitment issue that we're solving. It's a transaction. The other piece is on the analytics side. That's the second core. So we're a du dual core company in that sense. Predictive and prescriptive analytics. Are you able to tell companies that you have an attrition model that can predict that people, certain people in specific jobs are going to leave in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, right? Can you help companies understand joining probability in a real sense? Is the person you have released an offer to going to join you in reality? In reality? What is the chance of the person joining? So that goes into predictive and prescribe, uh, prescriptive insights. On the internal side, you're able to forecast demand better. You're able to give companies supply intelligence. You're able to perform resource profile management. And you're able to allow talent to transform, which is the fringe benefit, but a very valuable benefit when it comes to learning and development of a company based on organizational goals. So that is the the offshoot of what we're doing. And so what next from Edge Networks in terms of the next uh, 9 to 12 months? Are there any additional features, benefits that you're working on currently that you're personally excited about? So one, one of the things I keep chanting as a mantra is focus. Our focus is to be the best search and match company, to provide the best analytics for search and match, and that's really the core. The rest that we build on features is learning paths for talent transformation, uh, career progression for people to understand what is the path within an organization, um, ability to understand um, how to build your career path within an organization based on an organization goal is something that we are looking at as the next level of transformation that we can perform. Are we doing it today? Yes, we're doing it today. Are we building engagement models that allow candidates to come into an organization because they want to? We're changing the game on that. We don't want people to fill 16 fields to get into an organization. We want them to fill four fields so that they can get into an organization. And that career management or career engagement aspect is going to be game defining and game changing from us for the large customers, which then is going to peter down as an effect as a value proposition to small and medium businesses. Interesting. So uh, coming to the close of this conversation, uh, what are your expectations by participating in a conference like TechHR? So my expectation from a participation perspective has always, I've been a great fan of People Matters from the beginning because I felt at the cusp of what we are seeing today, I've seen two years ago, three years ago, because that was the journey that they were going on to build the, the understanding that HR itself has a place on the table from a decision making, from a direction making uh, perspective, right, for organizational change. And that has come into fruition with all the companies starting up and building solutions that are nifty, focused, small, but very valuable. And that you're seeing around, right? Uh, goes into question, do you sort of alienate uh, the companies that are larger? No. You see a cornerstone on demand here. You see a sum total here. You see an SAP here. You see a career builder here. But at the same time, you see people who are doing gift for employees right across our stall. You're seeing artificial intelligence companies, hiring companies, employee referral companies, all sitting in the same room. So you're able to connect to an ecosystem that will partner hopefully, uh, and partnership as an economy, building activity will start de delivering value to the customer, the end customer, which is demand driven. Hence, I see that these are the right forums. I believe TechHR is building a format that allows technology and HR to relate, integrate, and partner in the right sense to build an ecosystem. That's an outcome that I'm seeing as a learning outcome. On a business development standpoint, I have my customers here. I have future potential uh, prospects here that I can target. Excellent. So that kind of leads me into my last question. Which uh, few players uh, that, that has uh, you know, caught your attention personally in, in this uh, tech HR? Well, there are a few players here who um, 
sort of uh, like ripple hire from an employee referral perspective has been at it. Uh, I think they are gaining traction because of their employee referral model. Um, I'm seeing a lot of companies uh, like Nolscape, which has interesting user interface on managing different types of talent for different types of reasons coming up and doing some interesting stuff. These are two companies that come to mind. Um, and um, then there's a host of other companies. Thank you.